Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Um, so I'm back to do another video. This time I am making a vessel. So this is um, inspired by Rachel and Sarah at Roxy Creations and um, their recent video um, their recent project video so 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 you know that's this is what they're making so they're making vessels so sarah's making a more of a ball shaped vessel and um rachel is making a, a taller one i'm going somewhere in between and i'm making um a, a vessel that would stand around about sort of well this high so if i'm going to fold this what i've got here is a piece of felt i don't really have any batting and this is the um my well, strongest you know sort of thickest felt that i've got at the moment i did have a lovely piece um that i used for my really nice pouch that i made the other day but this is what i've got left so i'm going to use this and this is just check that that's all it's not exactly perfectly straight but um hopefully it will work out <laughs> so um yeah i'm making a vessel so i had this calico i've got a huge sheet of it and um it's, it's just been sitting there for quite some time now i used to make canvases uh, my own stretchers and canvases and uh, not i didn't used to make yes i used to make canvas is not a canvas and um yeah so i would make a stretcher you know with wood and then i would add the canvas on top and um, i don't do it anymore so i thought i would use it up because um it's a lovely piece of fabric and why not so what i what i'm going to do is i'm going to fold this over um like that and that's going to be the top i'm just going to pin it while i'm so this gives it a really nice, um, actually thinking about it, I don't have it, I'm, I'll think about it in a minute after I've just shown you what it would look like. So this gives it a nice thick edge to work with, um, the top of it to work with. So then I would be bringing this in here like this, so I'm going to fold that over. So obviously I'm going to have a bottom, um, you know, a base rather. Um, so yes, obviously. So, um, you know, this would just be attached to that, to the base. But I just wanted to show you what it will look like. You know, how, how deep it is and how wide it will be. So then that will attach to there. Actually, I think I thought it was going to be a bit less than that, so I might bring it up a bit more because I didn't. I don't want it too tall. Is what I'm. I'm aiming for a shorter one. So I think I'll go with that. Yeah, so I'm going to go with that. It's hard to tell when it's like this, but I think this is the the depth that I want for my ball to have on my vessel. Um, I, I love the look of these fabric vessels and um, I have made them before but I don't think I've made them quite like this so I've made them with wool felt so fleece and then but I haven't made them in this way I think I've made them I think I'm sure I've made a vessel in the past but not quite like this so anyway it doesn't matter um, it's new experience and so I'm going to, while I'm, um, might as well pop this in here like that, and then I, we can see how how it looks. So then, because I've got a nice neutral base, I can then start to decorate the external part of it. And that's where it gets interesting, I think, because, um, 
yeah I, I can access all my so that will be the the ball it still feels a bit too deep for me still want it a bit deep uh less deep than that um i'm not sure i mean i yeah i don't want it that that um Would be better with the other way around so if i just take this there and i just make this yeah i think that's better doing it like this and then take this over here all right let's see what this looks like <laughs> and then i really just need a piece of cloth for the inside to you know cover up this bit yeah that's that's what i wanted this is what i want i want something like this yeah that's much more the size that i'm looking for i just didn't want it too too tall um i like tall vessels don't get me wrong but on this occasion i want to do a smaller vessel and then i might look at a bigger one later on so this is how it will look and then i will um decorate it so we're doing well so far so what I need is a piece of fabric that will go across there and I will stitch it to everything. Um, now I'm thinking that really isn't something that you need to see. Um, I would have thought maybe you would prefer to see, you know, when I finally stitch the, you know, when I finally do the slow stitch on the, on the vessel itself, on this bit. So, yeah, I think that would be best. So I've got a nice chunky top here and, and there. And then what I'll do is I will find, I'll get another piece of this. This is the, the fabric that I've used, this calico. And let me just see if I've got a piece that, yeah. So then I can just use this over the top so it's all one and i've got that nice padding underneath it and uh, a nice thick edge to work with because i like the chunky edge and then the bottom i will have to work out the bottom so yeah i just thought i'd bring you along with that and then um i will pause the video i'll work on that and then i will show you the next step so that will be um yeah i will be choosing the fabrics what have you so there you go so i hope um that helps and gives you an idea of what i'm working on next so thank you for watching and i'll be back soon hello everyone um so i'm just carrying on from my last video um i stitched I did what I said I was going to do. I folded over the calico over there and there, but it wouldn't go all the way. So then I added this little piece here to, um, you know, for the for the cover inside. And then I forgot about um, switching the camera on to do this. But as you can see, what I've done is I've laid. It took me absolutely ages. Um, to make decisions i've got piles and piles of fabrics out all over the place and i realized just how bad it was um you know they're in so many different containers and i you know it's hard to find anything that's um when i want it but it's all there so i do i do need desperately need to sort it out so uh, that's my next job but in the meantime i just thought i would um show you what it looks like so it will look like this 
Uh, so we'll have that on one side and that on the other. And then I did plan to put something here, but I'm not sure where I've put it now. Um, yeah, that, it's somewhere. Anyway, so I, I will put something. I think I'm going to put something here where the two joins will be. So I hope you, um, yeah, hope you can see what I've done here. So I've just layered lots of bits of paper, uh, bits of fabric. Sorry, this is, I think that was under there, wasn't it? So what I've done is, um, you may be able to tell by the way I'm handling it. Um, I've put dots of glue underneath the, um, the fabrics because I don't like pinning, not to this degree anyway, where there's so many pieces in the past um when i did it i just didn't enjoy it at all so um i've used a little tiny dot of glue on each one probably not enough actually so i'm just going to add in a little bit there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do um basting stitch just i know i've got glue and that's holding it together but i want to do the basting stitches to make sure that everything's stable and secure and then i will do some slow stitch so I just wanted to show you what I've done and I'll do um I'll bring you along just for a little bit of this basting stitch and then I'll turn the camera off and uh, when I come to do <coughs> and put it back on sorry start again I will once I've done a little bit of baste stitch basting stitch I will turn the camera off and then once I've finished that and I want to do some slow stitch then I will turn the camera back on and we'll have the, the next part of it. So I'm going to start just here. Now, um, I'm not, I'm doing this now. I'm not, I don't want to do it while it's, um, just don't do that. Yeah, I don't want to do it ooh, while it's, you know stitch together the whole thing I mean I want to do it oh let me see I'm just not concentrating um taking I'm doing I'm not doing back stitch at this stage although I will do it maybe when I encounter an edge of a piece like this I usually do that when I have an edge that just holds it in place um like this i'll do it here so i hope you, you can see from here what i'm what it is i'm doing um i found my needle by the way it's bent but it's such a good needle because it's so fine but yet strong, it um, allows me to do, you know, to stitch through quite thick fabric, as you can see, this is quite thick. I'm pleased with, with how it looks now. I, I was, it took me, as I said, it took me quite a long time to make decisions on what cloths I was going to use on the top and if I was going to use anything and I looked at lace and I felt it was too twee and so you know I've been trying to make decisions probably and you know these things do take time but it was probably over an hour that I was sat trying to make decisions and then got went down a rabbit hole opening up all my boxes of fabrics and things just ridiculous really how much I got so um, and ironically, I've got an order coming today for some more little pieces of fabrics and cloths and all sorts of stuff. But there we are, you know, it's a bit of an obsession. Um, I'm very interested in textiles and I have been, oh, many, many years. Um, I didn't do anything about it, really. You know, I rarely did anything about it. I did occasionally. I mean, I, I've always done sewing um, and enjoyed sewing, but, you know, decorative stitch, it, it was more practical. So decorative stitch is fairly new to me. Done a little bit of embroidery, but it, you know, it's nothing to, 
to speak on about it's just basic you know very basic stitching um so anyway um yeah as i say i don't know if you can see but i'm go i'm doing a back stitch whenever i come to an edge i didn't do it there i should have done it there but i'll do it maybe later um so i'm just doing large smaller stitches on the top and um, larger stitches below. I should do a back stitch here. Oh, that's a long, a long one, but I don't mind. I don't mind a bit of sewing showing through. Just realized it is going to show on here, but I don't mind that either. <laughs> but the only problem might be that, in fact, I don't need to go all the way through when I think about it. I will go all the way through just to the end because then it just looks like I've sewn. And I didn't even check whether that was top or bottom, but I don't know if it matters now. There was one side originally that was uh, thicker than the other, but then I equaled them out. So this has got lots of different um, pieces of fabric. So it's got... Um, rust dyed fabric it's got swatches that i've acquired over the years um this is from an old quilt i've got some really pretty um sanderson style fabrics here and yeah lots of different that's some nice ticking that that's this lovely piece here is off a pair of trousers of mine um they were just too long so i took them up but you know cut the edges off so they were just too long um, sort of summer trousers very nice ones <laughs> so um anyway how are you all i hope you're well um as you can probably tell by the number of videos i've had out i've been busy in my craft room and enjoying it it's been very cold outside for me anyway i'm just gonna have a sip of coffee if that's okay um yeah it's been chilly and i don't don't like it at all um in june so it's coming up to the summer solstice so um right now what i'm going to do this time is i'm i'm going to um just go in there like that and then I'm going to lift this up a little bit and not go all the way through if you know what I mean so I'm just going to where am I here so I'm just gonna do a little stitch and come out there but I'm not going to go all the way through to the back and I'm going to do that all the way along Um, sorry, you probably can't see that. Uh, find it difficult to stitch this way. It's quite a quick way of stitching, but I'm gonna have. What I'll do is I'll just put it down like. No, I'll do it like. Yeah, I'll do it like that. It's just that I'm worried you can't see because <laughs> of the light. But it is um, a bit still very cloudy, but I think the sun is going to come out later. I've had bouts of sunshine and then it's gone in, but it is a lot warmer compared to how, what it has been. Um, but yeah, really chilly for June, mid-June. I believe it's much colder than it normally is. Um, last June was glorious where I was. It was like being abroad, it was so hot. Mm, so maybe I've just been spoiled. I mean, I was only in the south, <laughs> you know, southeast. Um, right, so this is some of the pieces are harder to stitch, especially like because I'm not going all the way through. And if I was just going all the way through, I think it would be easier. Um, 
Um, so I'm, I'm enjoying this. Um, I when I after I um, created this piece, this before I put these little pieces on, I re I thought to myself, you know, I've made my I've made hard work for myself because I really didn't need to do all of this. I have plenty of fabrics that I could have used and um, in a different way, you know, independently. I didn't need to layer up so many pieces and do it in the way that I did. But, you know, you live and learn. Um, so, yeah, lot, lots of nice pieces of cloth. I'm just gonna actually what I don't need to I don't think um oh, I love this needle it's so nice just um and I I don't know where I would I don't know what type of needle it is it, I just have to go by you know when I buy more I'll just I mean I have got a lot of needles but I haven't got any another one like this I don't believe so if I was going to go and buy one, I'd need to um, take it with me, really. Before it breaks and then or I lose it permanently. I found it. I'd scooped it up when I was trying to clear my table with um, fabrics. I often do that, actually. I often find needles in bundles of fabric that I've... And I'm lucky I don't prick myself more. <clears throat> Had a terrible night's sleep. Um, so I didn't... I started off not being able to get to sleep and not feeling too good actually and then and I thought mm, you know maybe I've picked up a virus or something it didn't feel right and then so I was awake until well Bobby my cat came in he, w he went out about 10-ish and maybe 10.30 and then he came back in at 2.00 and then he wanted to go back out again. So I don't have a cat flap at this moment in time, but I'm, I'm intending to get one. I just haven't got around to it. And I really need to because it's affecting my sleep. Um, so, yeah, he he came in and then he decided he wanted to go back out. He was crying insistent that he wanted to go back out. So I had no choice. So it was get up and open the door for him and let him out. So I let him out and then 15 minutes, well, maybe half an hour later, he was back crying at the door. And it, that's very unusual. He wouldn't normally do that. Maybe if it was extreme weather and he just got, you know, caught in it in a rush of rain or something like that, he'd probably do it then. But so I um, went down to open the door and I was bleary eyed. I couldn't see a thing. I was just half asleep. And... Um, let him in he ran straight through the house and upstairs and i walked past him in the doorway of this room to go into my bedroom and uh, as i was going past something i i sort of realized something had caught the corner of my you know was in the corner of my eye when i looked down at him i sort of glanced at him anyway um He'd caught a poor little bird and he'd brought it in with him. So my initial reaction was to sort of scream, not too loudly, but I did scream a little bit um, because he had it in his mouth. I saw him drop it and then I saw him pick it back up in his mouth and I thought, oh, my goodness, you know, and I didn't know if it was alive at that point. So when I bent down to try and get it off him, it was, I realised it was alive. I scared Bobby, um, probably by shouting, and then Bobby dropped him again, and then he flew off, the bird flew off, so it sort of flew, it didn't fly properly, but he sort of flew very low, 
and Bobby. I then, Bobby then started to chase him. I started to chase Bobby and it was a nightmare. He, Bobby in his wanting to get to the bird, you know, tipped things over. Um, I have a basket of, uh, I don't want that on there. Can't even see where I'm at here. So I have a basket of um, recycled paper and things like that, and that went tumbling over. It was, a, and then I was chasing after them, so I was tripping everywhere. I was trying to get to the bird before he did. Oh, my sewing is so good. I don't even know where I am now. And I can't tell because I'm come on, so it must be out here still. Well, it doesn't look as though I've oh, that's weird. I, might, I think it might be there. Yeah, it's there, but I'm not, I haven't come as far down as I thought I was. So it's there, so I need to start here. Oh, gosh, where's my needle? Oh, no, Lord. What did I do with my needle? Right, um, so, so then I'm, Bobby then got managed to catch the bird before I could get to the poor thing. I, he started running down the stairs as quick as, as quick as he could. I followed him as quick as I could. And um, I mean, I've never been so fast in my life. You know, I sprinted down those stairs. Normally I hobble. So that was, you know, a rush of energy, a rush of adrenaline. And then, anyway, he dropped it at the bottom of the stairs. So I picked the poor little thing up and he didn't, Bobby didn't see me do it, actually. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. Bobby didn't actually see me do it. So um, he was looking for the bird, sort of, you know, meowing. And I had the little bird in my hand just hidden in my the palm of my hand and then I yeah I, what I've done is I've I've sort of had a row there am I on my third row I am aren't I so there's the second row so I'm sort of going up towards the second row so I need to make sure I've come down a little bit otherwise so anyway, <clears throat> sorry. So I had the little bird in my, the palm of my hand and then I encouraged Bobby to go up, back outside because he was meowing and wanted the bird and he couldn't find it. And I thought, well, I can't do anything with Bobby and, um, and the bird. So Bobby went out looking for the bird probably. And then, um, or furious, he was furious. And then... I brought the little bird upstairs with me into my bedroom because I thought, well, if Bobby comes in, the safest place would be in my bedroom. I don't know why I thought that, but but actually I didn't know if the poor little thing would die because, you know, its heart beat was beating really fast. It was sort of not really, I mean, it was moving its head, but, you know, it looked injured. It lost a few feathers on its, in fact, it lost its wing feathers, most of its wing feathers on one side um, and most of its tail feathers. So I just assumed, I thought, well, this isn't going to survive because we won't be able to fly. Anyway, I held it in my hand and it sort of just laid there and didn't really move. Um, only when I moved my head to look, oh, but it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, I'll take it out. Um, yeah, 
when I moved my head, that was when I'm going to call him a he. He, he moved his head and he was a robin. I don't know if I mentioned that. A little robin. Didn't look very old. Um, but I don't think it was a fledgling. Um, sometimes robins are big and, you know, sort of established and old. But the, this was a, a young one. But I don't think it was a fledgling, as I said. Um, anyway, so I kept him warm and waited to see what he would do. And of course, it was early hours of the morning and I was exhausted and just needed to sleep, but couldn't. So anyway, I lay there and then I thought, oh, I can't just keep holding him all the time. You know, if I fall asleep, I might crush him. So I put him down on on my duvet um, and he flew off. I couldn't believe it. So he, he could fly even with injured um, wing and feathers. And he flew very well. It wasn't like he, you know, didn't. Yeah, he I mean he flew very well. Um, there was no sort of hobbling around or anything like that. He um, had all use of his feathers. So he flew onto my dresser and and then the curtain rail. And then I sort of left him because his heart was pounding. I could see his heart was pounding whenever I went close. So I left him for a little while, another half hour. And then I thought, well, you know, he can't stay in here all night so or all morning, rather. So um, because, you know, what will I do with him? And he could hurt himself. So anyway, I tried to catch him, but it wasn't just I'm just not quick enough. That he was a quick little bird. He was very curious. And um, so I opened my bedroom window as far as I possibly could and encouraged him to go out and then eventually about half an hour later he did but he rested for a while different parts of the bedroom <laughs> and then off he went uh, i was really happy to not to see that he'd survived and that he was able to fly away safely uh, just you know it made not having any sleep worthwhile to know that he was because he would have been surely dead if, if Bobby had kept him. Um, he Bobby doesn't very often bring anything home. I you know I knew that he was a hunter because in the past he has hunted, but I thought maybe he had stopped because you know when they um, when they reach a certain age, I thought that maybe they stop. I don't know whether they carried on. Because in, in cats in our family in the past haven't done it. So um, anyway, yeah, I was a bit sad that he's doing it. Maybe it was just easy for him this particular morning. But he was obviously excited about going out and looking for birds. At that, you know, he knew he could hear them. Um, so he must have thought, right, well... I'm going to go and catch one. I might not have thought of all, it was just instinct, you know. Just he was in the right place at the right time for him. And, uh, poor little bird in the wrong place at the wrong time. So, anyway, he's safe, and uh, you know, the fact that he could still fly and without any difficulty. Um, I felt that he would be safe, he, you know, he would going, leaving and I wouldn't have known what to do with him anyway, you know, I could be having a cat in the house, you couldn't exactly, you know, nurse a bird back to health if he was injured to the point where he couldn't fly, I wouldn't know what to do. So I did think about what I would have to do, you know, maybe look at to see if there were people who did that sort of thing, fostered little robins. <laughs> I don't know if that sort of thing exists. And I know hedgehogs and, you know, other, other creatures, but I didn't know if anybody looked after little birds, injured birds like that. There'd be so many 
fledgling i mean i would yeah there will be a few still left fledglings and um so the chances are high i think for any cat they are hunters after all and it's the thing that really really i struggle with um because bobby has always been an outdoor cat he, he likes going out he cries to go out if you were when we first moved here i had to keep him in i don't know if i mentioned this for a number of weeks and um he didn't even want to go out he wanted to stay in anyway he was he knew what to do even though he'd never done it before and um so he stayed in you know quite happily he didn't want to go out a bit of a scaredy cat and then gradually over time he it was time for him to go out and there is no keeping bobby in no none at all he just cries he'll rip up carpets he'll rip up he'll rip furniture with his claws you know he will pester you and pester you until you, he goes out and it is it's not very nice he screams <laughs> so yeah so anyway you've seen me do um this much so oh, that was where i just take that little bit off there right so I'm going to carry on and I will come back when I'm ready to do the slow stitch. So, um, yeah, sorry for the drama. <laughs> um, I hope I wasn't out of, um, you know, frame. But, um, yeah, it's, it's getting there. So um, I will be back when it's time to come back. 